Did your kids ever open up the door with great determination and ended up with a hole in the wall? Well, today in this episode, I'm gonna show you an easy way to fix it. So here we go. This is a common problem that happens at least once to every homeowner. I'm gonna show you guys how to accomplish this using the tools you have at home. First step, guys, is to take your tape measure and measure the diameter of the drywall piece we'll be putting on the wall. Usually, I recommend four inches of unaffected wall on each side. So in this case, we're looking here at nine inches by nine inches. So this will be pretty cool. Let me show you guys how to cut some drywall. All right, guys, so now that we have our drywall piece on the ground, you'll need some sort of straight edge like this one here. Could be a piece of wood as long as it's straight. So put it right on here, we'll set it, and we need to measure nine inches from this side. So nine inches here, you mark it up. Get your straight edge on here. Put a straight line. And then we'll do the same on this side. Nine inches. Straight edge. Put it up. Mark it up. And there you go, we'll be using this part here. All right guys, and now to cut it up, you need just a utility knife, it could be any knife. You get that straight edge, put it on your line. Just cut it like this without putting too much pressure. What we're doing is just creating a small cut and check this how cool it is. Just go here, give it a little tap, and there you go. So you flip it over, cut it here, and then you got your first piece. And for the second one, we do the same. Put the straight edge here on your line. Put a cut through it on the side, and look at that. One small hit, and it's done. So you just cut here. And we got our piece. So now that we have our cut piece of drywall, I marked it already on the wall, but let me show you how it's done. So you take your piece, take the marker, put it on the wall, and then you wanna make sure it's as square as possible, and then you mark around it, like that. And then once that's done, you know exactly where to cut. So there's a few ways, guys, to cut into this drywall. So if you have a cordless tool, I would recommend oscillating tool. Or you could go with a cutout tool. This works great too. And if you want just regular tools, you could go with a regular knife, but it takes more time to cut through the drywall. So for the purposes of this video, I'll use the drywall saw. Before we get to cutting, guys, make sure there's no wires in this area. Safety first. So this is a classic scenario. So we have wood studs here. They're usually 16 inches apart behind the wall. And in this case, on the left side, we don't have any wood to support that new drywall piece we just cut. So you'll need a scrap wood piece of wood like this, about three inches uh, wide. And what you want to do is you put it inside like this, and then we'll screw it in here. So we'll be able to put that drywall piece so that it's well supported. So let me show you guys how this is done. So we'll start by putting a few drywall screws in the wall. So make sure that when you put the screws, you don't go all the way in to make sure your piece of wood can go behind. Make sure that when you screw, you don't go all the way through the wall, guys, or else this is gonna create more work for you guys in the long run. So you kind of just countersink a little bit there. And just like that, you can now put your piece in the wall. There you go. So now I'm gonna secure this quickly and I'm gonna show you guys the next step. So this is nice and secure. So the next step will be to get yourself some all-purpose mud, which is right here, and then drywall tape. So before we get into mudding, you'll need a six inch knife. I personally use an eight inch one, because when applying the coat, I feel it applies it more evenly. Then grab that all-purpose mud. You'll want to mix it up with water. It takes more time to dry, but it's easier to work on the wall. So consistency wise, you'll want it to be like, I would say sour cream, something like this. Have a look. So now that everything is nicely mixed, you wanna make sure you grab your knife and you scrape 
around the area to make sure that there's no pieces coming out or, and everything is even. Then you'll want to grab your mud. I use a hawk here. So you'll want, you take your mud, you put it on the hawk, and then you'll want to fill up all these gaps. So let me show you guys how to fill up the gaps and then we'll move on to the next step. Guys, I pre-cut my tape already. So you want to grab your tape, put it over like this. Put a nice squeeze on it, make sure it grabs onto the wall. And then you take that excess mud, take it out. And then you keep doing it for all four pieces. So when you'll be applying the tape, guys, you'll be left with a bit of mud on your knife. Just simply return it back on top of the tape. Give this a few hours to dry and we'll get back to it tomorrow, guys. Now that we've waited overnight and this is nice and dry, you'll want to grab a sanding sponge and put your hand on the wall just to try to find some uneven type of bumps that you'll lightly sand with the sanding pad. We don't want to go rough on this wall, guys. Just want to go very light so that we can put another coat on here. So have a look. I'll show you how that's done. Before we get to that second coat there, just a quick tip, guys. If you haven't cleaned your tool, you can easily do so with a sanding pad. So if you have a quick look, you'll see it's easy to clean. Look at that, much better. So obviously, as you sand it, you'll get everything out and you don't need to put any water on it. So there you go, ready to be used. All right, so let's get on to that second coat. All right, so let's grab uh, our hawk or a pan for those uh, of you who have that. And uh, what we want to do is, uh, I like to start from the middle, work my way on the sides. <clears throat> and we want a thickness of about 2 16 to 1 8. So for our international viewers there, we're looking at a thickness between two to four centimeters. So let me show you guys what I reckon. Start from the middle, work your way down, sides. So, like I explained earlier, guys, this mud should be a consistency of about sour cream. So we're still looking at this type of uh, mud. Here. So once you got your mud on here, you can start gradually from the middle, pushing it down, pressing it down. You don't want to remove too much because that's where you're going to get the good thickness. But you want to make sure that there's the least bubble as possible on there. So what you want to do as well is put pressure on this side when you're on the right side. So you'll want to feather the edges. So a good way of seeing it is you're pushing on this side here. And then on this side, you put less pressure. So let me show you. There goes one side and then same here, but on the other side, you'll want to feather the other side. So this is about uh, just a bit thicker than I would like it. So again, we'll go over just to remove a bit of thickness. And you know, don't push too hard, guys. There you go. About this. Feather the edge. Feather the other edge. And there you go. So we'll let that dry. It's going to take about uh, 12 hours. And then we'll get back to the next step. Quick tip guys, so for those of you that want to accelerate the drying process, it's possible. Here's what I recommend, blow dryer. That's right. So if you blow dry the area five minutes to 30 minutes, it's definitely gonna help the drying period. It's gonna shorten it. So let me show you just a quick example of how I dry this so that we can get the job done quicker. <laughs> So to see progression, guys, look at the ends. You'll see it's kind of a wet type of uh, grayish dark color. And then once it gets dry, it actually blends in with the wall, it becomes a whitish type of color. So that's how you know it's dry versus wet. So if it's still wet, still humid in there, you want to keep drying until it's the same color 
as the wall, all right? So we've been at it for about 10 minutes. If you guys get a bit impatient, it's normal. Just take about half an hour if you want to accelerate the process. But you know what I find that helps a lot? Start it up, take care of yourself, give yourself a new style, check it out. Not bad, eh? <laughs> no, let's keep going. Right, so it's been about half an hour. So what you wanna do now is grab that sanding pad. We'll sand lightly, guys. We shouldn't have major lines or major bumps or anything like that. But if you do, you'll wanna lightly sand it. Make sure that you uh, feel that it's dry under it. You know, you kind of feel it when you touch it. And if you feel uh, kind of humid or moist, well, you still gotta dry it with uh, the blow dryer. So uh, as you can see here, not many lines are showing and you'll wanna start with the middle, lightly sand the middle. If you see any lines, get rid of them. Don't put too much pressure, guys. When you sand, you don't wanna put too much pressure. And then on the side, start with the side, start blending it in with the wall. So what you want is a cloudy type of finish. You want your sides to kind of blend in with the wall. If you look at clouds, it has to look in that type of sense. So you go all the way around. Make sure you blend it as much as you can. Make sure you put your hand on the wall. If you feel any edges, make sure everything is flat. There you go, guys. So this is looking good. Now we're ready for skimming. The last coat, so let's do it. So for skimming, guys, what it is really is the finish so that everything blends in perfectly. And also sometimes you'll have little holes, imperfections from the second coat that you did. So skimming will basically just finish it off perfectly, blend it into the wall, and then we'll do just an even lighter sand with the sand pad on it, and then we're gonna be ready for paint. So let me give you a quick example of skimming. So you grab uh, a little bit of mud there. Over top again. Except this time, you're not leaving as much mud on the area. Before it was about 2 sixteenths to 1 eighth. Now we want to leave not even 1 16th. So you want to kind of put much more pressure on it so that you're not left with so much mud. And you're kind of just blending it into the wall, right? this spot here where I had a little hole which I'm fixing right now it's that simple so basically when you skim you're really going over your wall putting much more pressure onto your knife to make sure that you're not leaving as much mud and again if you're in a hurry put the blow dryer on this should take more than 10 minutes this time and then I'll show you guys how to lightly sand this so that we can put some paint on there look at this look at this result you can barely see there was a hole there right <laughs> so now when I put my hands on it it's still not perfect so I'm gonna lightly sand the edges but really guys at this point you're ready to paint so this is pretty much what you need to do here just lightly sand wherever you feel there's still a small edge that's it you guys just fixed the hole in the wall you guys are ready to paint so I wanted to thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. If you guys have any comments, let me know. Guys, it's a pleasure to answer you. If you have any tips, things you could have done better, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing, guys. Help out our channel. This is a brand new DIY channel. So we're definitely looking to grow, show you guys as many projects as possible. So uh, it does help us out if you guys enjoy this video. If you like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.